Hello everyone, welcome to another coaching clinic by the J Shetty Certification School. Welcome everyone and uh, welcome Viraj. Thank you for doing this with me again. Oh, this is always a pleasure. It's so great to connect with everyone every couple of weeks and seeing familiar names, great questions, great energy. I love it. Thank you so much. I am so inspired to cover today's topic because first of all, it was one of the most requested topics. And second, because I think time management becomes so vital and so important during the stage of the life that we all across the world are living in. Do you agree? Absolutely. I think it's one of those areas that we all know it's really, really important, but yet somehow we fail to kind of fully grasp it and, and make it work. So I'm really excited to see what people get from this conversation and what we're able to share ourselves too. Thank you so much, Viraj. I agree with you. So, hello, everyone. Let us know where are you tuning in from. We are giving a couple of minutes until everybody is going to tune in because everybody gets notifications at different time. So good to see our students tuning in regularly. Hello, Estelle. Hello, Donna. Michelle. Viraj. Estelle is saying hi to hey, you. <laughs> Cherry, Sherosuita, Candida, Andre, Mazen, Yuvarajan. Hello, oh. thank you for taking the time. So good to see you as always. Uh, Alina, Sherish, and the chat just went crazy. And this is absolutely fantastic. We love this time. We wanted to give it a couple of minutes as today we are having some really different exercises comparing to uh, what we usually do. Usually we do more of a uh, reflection we do more of um, self-digging, right? And creating more awareness. Today, we are going to be pairing the awareness exercises with some actual analytical exercises, which are going to bring you a different perspective on time management. So if you all are tuned in, if you all are ready, if you have your pens, your notepads, or simply you are going to do exercises in the chat, why don't we give it a go without further ado? I see 70, 80 people already. I think uh, we can give it a start. So what are we going to be talking about today? Today we are covering time management. However, we are going to be talking about non-traditional way to manage your time. Uh, as you know, we are a coaching school. A lot of you are studying in this uh, coach training school. And so the way we view time uh, and the way we will be exploring time today is more from a philosophical perspective, more about thinking of time as a resource to create the abundance of other resources in our life. So the goal of our today's group coaching session is to create awareness, but also identify blockers and reframe the perspective. So usually time management is viewed from productivity perspective or organizational perspective. And a lot of it is on the approach of go, 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 do less, uh, do more with less, and uh, try to produce as much as you can with this small amount of time that you've got, squeeze this, and uh, you know, kind of batch tasks and evaluate and analyze what can you delegate. All that is great. But we feel today we wanted to bring a different perspective. Here is where I want to ask Viraj, because Viraj, I know you are a master of time management. What are your views on different perspectives and different disciplines on time management? Which ones do you, do you think are more important at a particular stage and why? I think it really depends on, on what, firstly, what the end goal is. Like if there's something that we say the word is time crucial, there's a deadline, then it's okay, what are you working with and what do you need to implement to have something complete by a certain amount of time? Whereas where something is more holistic and process-based, sometimes procrastination comes in because people feel that they're not making enough progress and so therefore they waste time. So I think it's really important to get an understanding of what is the end goal and then effectively reverse engineer backwards of the velocity in which a task needs to be completed and, and the diligence that it needs to be applied in. Absolutely. And I'm so happy you spoke about that because a lot of conversations around time management, especially now, is how can you do even more? right? How can you uh, create more with the limited uh, amount of time that you've got? And uh, very few times we actually pause and think, what is the root cause of our procrastination? What is 
it's the root cause of our inability to achieve more. Not always it's about purely time management or productivity or organization. Sometimes the reasons lie within. You can be uh, procrastinating because you are not confident in your ability to do the task. You can procrastinate because of even traumatic experience which the feedback about the same task delivery, you know, was brought to you previously. And so now that scenario keeps replaying in your mind and you think, what's the point of doing this? I will get negative feedback anyway. It could be imposter syndrome. It could, could be so many other triggers that hold you back from progress. So today we're going to be looking at a slightly different approach to time management. And we will be learning philosophical ways to manage your time by asking yourself the right questions about your time. The reason I've put your time in capital because today I really want us to think about the global perspective, like your time here. What are we doing all with our time here, right? In this uh, particular point um, of Earth's life, right? And how are we making the maximum out of our time here? And uh, Viraj, I know that you are a fan of, you know, spiritual perspectives of uh, many of the disciplines that are trending right now. What do you think about the philosophical uh, perspective and this, you know, uh, high level view on time when we look at it not only from 24 hours, how do I plan it, but actually as a holistic lifetime of what we get to spend on Earth? Yeah. <laughs> This, I mean, there's so many different threads we could go down. I mean, you've got in the seven habits of highly effective people. I think the second habit is to begin with the end in mind. So if you have a finite amount of time here, how are you going to make it count? Um, and it's in that great question that you've got on the board. There's asking questions about your time. It's actually your time. It's no one else's. How are we choosing to put our time and in what places and in what energies and what purpose, et cetera. But then also in in, in, a, in another roundabout way, time is almost timeless because we only really started counting a few thousand years ago. So the fact that we're looking at time is almost, it kind of started here, but we started measuring it here and now we're looking back and then we're looking forward. Like it almost feels like we're putting too much emphasis on like the boundaries that time has rather than looking at how can we use time for us because it is our time. It's just making better choices about it. I love that. How can we use our time and make better choices about that? With that being said, let's give our audience today the first exercise. And this is going to be a bit of a mind twist because I bet you never thought about this question. How do you define time? I know this can be a bit of a struggle and uh, let's not Google. <laughs> let's try to come up with our own definition uh, and uh, explain to each other in the chat how do you define time? And um, it's tricky because, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, a concept that is difficult to interpret. But the beauty of it is that you have your own perception. You have your own understanding, unique understanding of what time is. So what time means to you? How do you define time? Viraj, uh, I know it's tricky, but maybe you can give it a start and set up. No, you wasn't going to ask me on this one. This is so hard. Um, I suppose I, I, there's the definition that we kind of use that time is a measurement of how long you spend on something. That's how much time you've, you've spent or what's coming up when. So there's sort of the metric version of time. Whereas I suppose philosophically, the only time you have is now, whatever's gone is gone and whatever's going to happen in 10 seconds hasn't happened yet. So then it's like, well, if the only time is now, what's happening? It, or we, we're sort of living in the fantasy of what's happened and what's coming up and we've given it a metric to say this was the X amount of years ago or minutes ago or coming up so it's it's a mind job really it's really really hard to define but um i would say for, as as we all kind of know it time is the metric in which we measure how much um of our attention we place into something I love how you define time and really the beauty of this exercise is that each one of us explains it differently which actually shows a lot about how we interpret what time is and how do we understand it, right? So I love Emmy's uh, comment, you know, the moment we hold the exercise, <laughs> Google Dern, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, Donna says, time is energy spent doing and being. I love that. 
Candida says, time a gift that we are given without knowing the cell by date. I think that's deep and really beautiful. Now, Veronica says, time is a limitation for her. Yuvarajan says, time is dynamic. Greatest teacher to uh, all of us and healer of problems as problems get solved over time. Interesting. Kruti says, I swear there is no such thing as defining time. I love that. Uh, Sean says, the perception of the distance between one moment to the next. Guys, take a moment to read the definitions in the chat. It really expands your mind and it shows you how each one of us is unique in a way that we interpret things, particularly when it's about such concepts as uh, time. Evelina says, a moment that passes that results in memories you create. And um, Nenny, a measure of one state to another in my mind. Uh, Lisa says, a coffee and a cigarette time. <laughs> Definitely resonate with Lisa, but uh, it's an interesting definition. You see how to each one of us, time means something else, right? Uh, I also uh, like uh, Roswita's uh, definition, time defected in time units, but also in emotions. They undefined timeless. Absolutely love it. So let's look at the actual classic definition of time. What's interesting is that the first people who started thinking about what time is were not businessmen, were not emperors or governors, but philosophers. Uh, the ancient philosophers such as Seneca spent a lot of their time trying to understand and define time and why humans are the only creatures in the world that have an understanding that their time on earth is limited. That's very interesting. Why only humans have this awareness that their time on earth is limited? So the actual definition of time is indefinite continued progress of existence and events in the past, present, and future regarded as a whole. So progress of existence is an interesting aspect, right? Time is a progress of existence. And um, the way you all interpret time actually should indicate for you the importance of this metric in your life or this resource in your life, right? So if you are defining time, for example, as really currency of daily life, I like how you put it into a tangible word, right? Time is the currency. Uh, that means you are very particular and you are imagining your time in a very tangible format right so you can understand a lot from your own uh, definition lisa says as human beings we need division maybe and routine absolutely yes uh, and also we need a perspective we need a perspective and we need an understanding what our time means to us so what is time the most important thing to remember about time that it's the most vital resource. Only with the time you can create endless uh, resources, internal or external, for yourself. For example, with the time you can definitely create um, money, right? You can create wealth. With the time you can create uh, awareness, you can create a skill, you can acquire a knowledge, you can become someone else if you invest your time in the right way. However, no matter how much knowledge, skill set or money you have, you can never buy time and bring it back. It's the only resource which can achieve and create the other resources. However, it's the only resource which we cannot bring back through another uh, resources that we create, be it internal or external. And so that's the unique beauty of this resource that it's a countdown. It's a constant countdown. And why are we aware about this countdown being existent? Uh, still, the mankind yet still has to understand. So if we are looking deeper and we try to understand the importance of time and time management in our life, we invite you to do the second reflective exercise and to answer the following question. Why is it important for you to manage your time better? What do you hope to achieve by better managing your time? Why do we even ask this question as a part of this session? I think Viraj can explain to us what kind of level of awareness these questions may create for you. 
Yeah, it's it's understanding your priorities. And the first part, why is it important for you to manage your time better? It's, it's understanding what are you putting your time into and how is that actually serving you, your purpose, your goals, your health, your well-being, your relationships, and being aware of what is the impact of not giving enough time into another area as well. So I think it's 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 a really good comparison point to compare. If you had, if you put more into something, it's again, it's the investment. Sometimes the more you put into something can be the the yield that you get back in return. And it's understanding what are going to be the better choices and the better use of the resource in, I suppose, the long term. And then what do you hope to achieve by better managing your time is is again, we have this question of if only I had more time, but then the time we all have the same amount of time so it's not that there's more time it's again pulling compartmentalizing one area into another um i was speaking to a friend and we had this conversation about um imagine if you spent two minutes in the shower every day compared to 10 minutes in the shower you would save eight minutes a day for a week which gives you you know 50 minutes say an hour a week that's 52 hours a year yeah. so you get two days back just like that Almost. So again, it's like when you when you really break it down in terms of that, you realize that time is there. That's that infinite abundant resource. We just need to be more present in how we're using that time and how we're abusing that time. Absolutely right. And so many times we use this sentence, I don't have time, sometimes even as an excuse, right? And sometimes we use this term to kind of replace it with it's not my priority. One of the best um, tips I've got in my time uh, when I was struggling with time management is stop saying I don't have time, start saying this is not my priority right now. And everything changed with that tip because if previously when my friends were inviting me out and I didn't feel like going, it's very easy to say I don't have time and everybody buys that in because no further explanation is needed. But when I actually have to tell them it's not my priority right now, it created that shift of perspective and it was very difficult to pronounce that even in my own mind, you know, let alone telling this to other people. So one of the interesting answers that I'm seeing is Veronica says, for example, she wants to manage time better to complete all tasks and achieve all immediate and long term goals. And so this is one of the interesting answers because are we truly held back from achieving our goals only because of time management, right? Or time management seems to be a great reason why we are not achieving our long-term goals. And it's also uh, a very definite, uh, you know, discipline to tackle. Uh, but Viraj, I'm sure you have more views as a coaching supervisor on this. Yeah, th this has always been my kind of battle. I've, I've got so much going on right now, I don't have time. But then when you really question it, you're like, well... I have all these things that I need to do and being a parent and doing all the running around and all that kind of stuff. So, okay, great. But then in the latter part of the day, when yes, of course, typically you do feel a little bit more tired, you do have that quiet time. So it's a case of, well, do I give myself that extra hour to just tie up the day or do I start the day a little bit earlier? But we make lazy choices because we feel like we've sort of, we feel defeated by the day and how much we've done. And still not realizing, okay, well, we do have that lever that we can pull, whether it is half an hour on an lever there. So to, to Veronica's point, is maybe question about the completion of the task. How important are these tasks? And there's a great tool that we have in our coaching library called the Eisenhower box, where it just looks at all the different tools that you to uh, all the different tasks that you have and which ones are your urgent ones and your most important ones, which ones are the things you can delegate, which ones that aren't really that important, and which ones you don't even need to think about. So sometimes looking at what you're doing and looking at that task list and really questioning is the order right am i actually taking out the lead domino here which will free me up other it's about just taking that step back and looking at that short-term and long-term perspective to see what you're doing today is going to fuel your long term anyway so seize the moment i love lorraine's uh, vulnerable and honest comment which says it is more easier to say i don't have time i always say that and so this level of awareness definitely helps, you know, with understanding, do we really need help with managing our time better or do we need to tackle some other, right, um, emotional triggers or maybe some other beliefs, right, or the reasons that make you say that, Lorraine. So my advice to you, if I may, would be, you know, try to self-reflect after the session and ask yourself, why do I always say that? 
you know, what is the urge for me to say I don't have time while I know this is not the case? It may bring some um, unexpected answers. Maria says she wants to manage her time better to have a more meaningful life. I absolutely love that. Um, I think it really ties well along with what we are covering next. And uh, Lisa says being able to pay for certain services would help me. So I think you meant delegating, right? So the moment you can start delegating, it can free up some time. That is, of course, very interesting. Uh, Lisa also says, COVID makes things a hell of a lot more difficult. I am isolated a lot, absolutely. And Rajesh says, by managing time better, I live consciously rather than being on autopilot. I think this is absolutely fantastic. Leona multitasking for me is a time stealer you learn to stop and prioritize equals time well spent absolutely agree moreover one interesting fact about multitasking which sometimes is not well known uh, because multitasking usually is promoted as the way to tackle many tasks easy um, at the same time so uh, one actually many studies have been done on this you cannot perform two tasks or more at the same time with the actual equal quality level. What does it mean? You cannot focus on two things at a time. That's just the way we are wired. We cannot do that. So if you are speaking over the phone and you're writing an email, you will either not listen or you will say something wrong in the conversation or you will make a mistake in the email. There is no other way around it. You think you are saving time by doing these two tasks together, but you are actually compromising the quality. Will you do it faster? Yes, you will. Will you do it at the quality level? No, unfortunately, you will not. The true way to multitask is to batch the tasks according to the nature of their creativity, but we are going too deep. Uh, into the mechanics today, that's not really the topic. But uh, one thing that you want to remember is, for example, all tasks that are related to listening, if performed together, you will perform them faster because your listening mechanism is switched on. All the tasks that are creative, writing, drawing, right? If batched together, you will perform them faster because your writing and creative mechanism is on at the given point of time. But do not try to do two tasks together because, again, quality it is go is going to be compromised. Viraj, looks like you want to add something to that. No, well, it, it's it's high frequency switching. So in one side, one your brain's going from a creative state to an analytical state. And that's where the quality gets compromised is sometimes when you have these flow states is when you've achieved the balance is when you have your full focus on something rather than doing multiple things at the same time. So whilst it may occur and some people maybe feel like they're efficient at multitasking, really they're just switching between tasks rather than doing them concurrently. And, and that's just how we're physiologically wired. We, we, and there's the myth of multitasking is the way forward. But then again, as you say, quality is compromised because you're just switching between different gears all the time and that'll wear you out. Absolutely. I love that addition, Viraj. Thank you for that. And I see some interesting answers which actually tie in together with what we are covering next. So uh, Mira says, I learned how to focus on one task only. It's not easy and it requires a switch in my mindset. I used to be a multitasker, feeling often exhausted and not accomplished. Of course, as you were spending your brain capacity. Absolutely. And uh, Miriam says, I want to use my time more effectively and not to devote all my time to work. I like my work, but it is not what I want to do for the rest of my life. Miriam, today we are going to be doing exactly that. The other interesting comment is from Kruti. It will cover Viraj's face for a minute, but I want to bring it on. What worries me is that often people are constantly trying to fill their time, whether it's work or routine mundane things. But a lot of us don't factor in the time to stop, relax, slow down, which we can actually reap benefits from too. Might just create more time as it gives you the space to know what your priorities are. Absolutely beautiful as we are going to try and tackle exactly that today. Thank you for wonderful reflections. Let's proceed further. So one thing that we want you today to... Um, change or reframe in your perspective, at least for this couple of minutes, is the way you are viewing your time as a global concept, your time here. So usually, you know, um, we measure our life in years. We are saying, oh, I am only 35. 
I still have at least 30 years to live in, in the worst case scenario. It's a lot of time, you know, still a lot of time, especially that trap is there when you are 20. You think, oh my God, I'm only 20. I have the whole life ahead of me. And then you turn and you are already 30 and then life, uh, time just keeps accelerating. But when we are going to change our perspective and start to measure our time in days or even hours, that shifts the perspective. The average life duration is counted as only 28,835 days. When you start viewing your lifetime in um, days measurements or even hours, it's just a little bit under 700,000 uh, hours of a lifetime. And so um, our perspective on our life can drastically um, seem completely different when we are looking about it in days. Viraj, what's your opinion about viewing your uh, you know, life in an average duration in days or hours? It, it kind of signifies how much of a moment we are in, in the universe. Like if you consider the universe has been what they estimate is 14 billion years, where 80 years is, is barely a blink. So it just kind of compounds how much significance potentially we're adding into the, the 80 years that we have and then looking at it from the perspective of, again, like we, as kids, we grow up thinking we've got all the time in the world. And then the moment we become adults and responsibilities kicking in, we're like, oh my God, where did the last 10 years go? So our even the perception of time, I think Sean's comment earlier on was, was spot on. Our perception of time changes as we get older because we're now measuring a clock rather than measuring what's what's the measurable that's in front of us right now. And when you break it down in terms of the numbers, it really gives you that, that um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like that kind of grounding of, do you know what? The, the time that we do have is valuable and we have no control over it to a certain extent as to when that clock's going to run out. So the question to ask is, is what are you going to make it mean? Absolutely. I think that, uh, you know, Jennifer is absolutely right. Looking at it in days, it doesn't seem that long. And that's the trick, right? It's the same duration. But when we say 79 years, it seems like a lifetime. You know, you're like, oh, my God, I don't want even to be around for that long, right? But then you look at uh, 28,000 plus days. And you think, okay, so in two years, it's going to be even 27, you know, 27,000. And then it's going to be decreasing and decreasing and decreasing. How do I make it count? Like, how do I make it count? Yeah. So um, uh, Andrew says, I realized a few years ago that multitasking was slowing me down. I had to retrain my brain how to single task. I was able to rewire my brain through meditation. Since I started focusing on one task at a time, I have been able to achieve a flow state in my life more often. Thank you so much for sharing. And Preeti says, I wish there was 36 hours in a day. And Roswita says, imagine to meditate for 62,000 hours. That's a whole of 2,083 days. It's, it's really interesting. I, I was reading a... Um an article um, that was talking about how life life expectancy has been shortening over the last few hundreds of years, where if you go back, say, 5,000, the average life expectancy was around 100, 150 years, and now we're kind of getting into the 80s. Um, so it was referencing something in the Vedas, and, it, and it's to um, the point that we had earlier from, uh, from Andrew was the multitasking and the whole slowing down that increases your stress and your heart rate. And, and I think from the Vedic perspective, it says that you were born with a certain quota of heartbeats. So if you're multitasking and increasing that stress and trying to do more, you could actually be doing a disservice to yourself as well. So it's really taking that, again, that holistic approach of how am I going to make these days and moments truly count? Yeah, absolutely. Maryam also has a good point. Time flies and we should be the pilots. I absolutely agree with you. I love that. Uh, thank you for sharing, Mariam. And if we are looking at the time investment and if we will break it down in days and we achieve that level of awareness, let's move further. And let's try to understand, uh, sorry, how can you spend your 28,000 plus? I hope you have the infinite amount and you have much, much more than that and uh, beyond. But we're just talking about the average facts, uh, just for an example. How can you spend your amount of thousands of days in a way that will create a meaningful life for you. Let's not forget about multitasking 
and managing your time and uh, you know understanding what's urgent and what's important, what's urgent and important, what's urgent but not important. Let's try to think about how can we spend the thousands of days given to us as a gift, as someone said, in a way that creates a meaningful life for us, first of all. Let's start thinking for a minute about our own satisfaction. What will be a meaningful life to you and how this investment of your thousands of days can be spent to create that meaningful life of your dream? What does it mean to you? I am seeing um, Ruchi uh, comment. We have to enjoy each moment, whether in official work or not. Minakshi says, by loving and giving. Candida says, by living in the present each day with an appreciate every minute. Donna says, love and connection, growth, contribution, and joy. Virash, how could you spend your thousands of days, uh, infinite thousands of days, in a way that would create a meaningful life to you? Yeah, I suppose the, the key thing then, and a lot of people have said, is being present in the moment means, means that you're just out of your mind, that you're fully present and experiencing what is going on around you, that you're impacting people and that you're seeing that impact in the service that you provide. And and that's kind of what we get, you know, that makes your kind of heart flutter a little bit, is that you see that ripple, that impact, that smile that you can cause. And and naturally, that's that's always very reciprocal. So in terms of meaning, it's it's really it's really being able to give what I can give and then receive whatever I receive without any kind of expectation and just playing to my strong suit without the attachment of how it may go or what am I going to get in return? Because that's where I think the trap is that we fall into. Did I waste my time? Did I not? Whereas actually, if we can just wholeheartedly be who we truly are in the moment, we totally forget about time and metrics. And we were talking about this the other day on, on Saturday when we did that webinar, like two hours flew past that we didn't even realize. So it's when you can be so immersed in the experience, I think that's the true value. I agree with you. I think what creates the feeling of um, having the meaningful life is when you don't count those hours, right? When they fly in such during such moments of satisfaction and happiness that you don't even realize that so much time has already gone because you were so happy in that moment, you were so present and you didn't want that moment to end. Now, some of the amazing, amazing answers I'm seeing for this question is from Nicola, for example, being healthy and happy, living in the present and impacting my children in positive way. Candy says, I want to spend the 5,000 days I have left. Oh, no, Candy, I hope you have thousands and thousands ahead of you. That number was brought as a fact on the average uh, life of, you know, uh, people on Earth. But it, it does not mean in any way, you know, it's dictated. Um, uh, I want to spend uh, the days I have left by being kind, present, sharing, caring, and giving to people. That's beautiful. Lisa says, yoga, meditation, self-awareness, and trying to live in the moment a real Really can help. Radhika says, growing and moving towards unconditional life. Abdi Wahab, to me, meaningful life is to live a healthier and happier life and having surrounded by lovely and positive people. Mira, working on leaving meaningful legacy for others and enjoying the life in that process. Michelle, giving the best of myself in love and feeling daily gratitude. And Minakshi, care of my mind, body, and soul to teach others the same. I love that. Viraj, any of the favorite answers in the comments? Uh, I mean, they're, they're all so good. Um, I, I feel like I'm doing a disservice if I don't pick one, but I, I really like what Adet has shared about being my authentic self. And that's a word that kind of gets thrown around a lot of authenticity but actually when you're just being your authentic self you do become timeless and time doesn't really matter and you're around people you're around places you're doing things where you're not measuring it you're just appreciating the moment because that authenticity is just flying out of you and that's 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 who you are in it in, in essence Absolutely agree with you, Viraj. And so now that we have reflected, created that level of awareness, this was a warm up, the warm up for the real exercises that we are now about to start. So let's begin as your mindset should be just ready for exactly that. So we want today to look at the time metrics 
and remember those time metrics as you're moving forward. There are a few metrics that you want to consider. One of them is the value of your own time. How often have you asked yourself, what is an hour of my time worth to me? Right. And of course, very common way to measure that is either in money, right, or in what you can create with the investment of that time. The second metric that you want to remember is time expense or time expenditure. That is all about how and where do you spend your time? Do you think and plan your time expense or does it happen naturally, as someone said, on autopilot? The third metric to remember is time investment. How do you invest your time and which rewards do you reap from that investment, right? And the last metric to remember, I call it a roti. Uh, I think uh, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, people will resonate with the term roti because uh, I know Everyone that likes roti. everybody likes roti, right? And uh, roti stands for return on time investment. So value of your time, time expenditure, time investment and return on your time investment. And we are going to be learning how to measure the return on your time investment so you can start thinking about your time as carefully as you are thinking about other most important resources. Viraj, what are your views about the time metrics and which ones do you think are can make a big difference once adopted? I think when you quantify time to money i think it becomes very real in terms of you could spend time doing something which could take you away from doing something else or you could invest a resource of finance into having that done for you which means you can concentrate on other things so i think when you kind of weigh up what is my time worth to me i think it becomes very real in terms of what's what what can be possible um when you look at it from that perspective. So I'm, I'm curious to see what happens. How do you measure the value of your time, Viraj? Um, that's a great question. It's very subjective. So sometimes if there's, if there's certain things that need to be done, I look at, is it worth me spending half an hour on it now? Or does it, does it even need to be me that does it? Um, sometimes if it's about getting something done and like yeah i could do it myself but actually someone else could do it better than i can so why would i do something at a certain level when i know that actually i can free myself up for something else and someone else can add the, find that quality so it again it's very subjective and I, I i like to just compare of do i want to spend half an hour doing this or can someone else do it or does it even need to be me that does it do i even have to be in this conversation Absolutely. Thank you for explaining that, Viraj. I think it's wonderful. And I want to um, explain that today we're going to be trying to measure your time with uh, changing and reframing the perspective, converting time into currency of money just for the purpose of seeing how careful we can be when it comes to investing money versus how careful are we currently with where are we investing our time. So the next exercise is going to help you understand how do you value your own time. You can interpret it in a way that is convenient to you, that is absolutely fine. Or if you struggle to define what is the value of your time to you and you prefer, for example, to convert the value of your time in the monetary measure just for the sake of exercise and the game we're going to play today, the hint can be how long would you wait in a queue to receive a hundred US dollars gift certificate. This is just a game. We are not trying to put labels or prices on the time. We are trying to shift the perspective and develop the care with which we decide whether to invest our money or not. The same level of care we want to develop about investing our own time. So what is the value of your time to you? Or you can also ask yourself, what is the value of one hour of my time to me? Or you can use the hint and simply answer that question. It is just a game uh, that helps generate the awareness about the care, level of care that we have. Viraj, 
how would you else define the value of your time uh, if there was no hint? Maybe we can give some other hints to our audience. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think, because this is a really good one. I'm trying to see what I can do to top this one. Um, what would it take for you to get out of bed? If you knew at the end of the day you were going to receive a certain amount, what would it take for you to get out of bed and do what you needed to do? Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. You see how interesting the responses come in? Andrew says, I would not wait more than five minutes. Mary says she would wait for one hour. Jennifer says, I wouldn't queue if it was for me, but I would queue for hours if it was for someone else. And uh, Candy, I don't stay in the queue longer than five, seven minutes. I've done it before and felt that after that, it is not worth my time. Absolutely, absolutely love this. And um, Mariam says, time is 86,400 seconds added to my life account to use for self-growth and not to be wasted. Amir would wait for 10 minutes. And uh, Mary says, $1 a minute, <laughs> that is how Mary is calculating. And I feel like, you know, it is really interesting to see how differently we can view, you know, the evaluation of our time. And it has nothing to do with the currency because currency is just a label, again, to develop the care, right? Think about this, before investing $100, in you know a dress or a you know a pair of shoes or a course or a book you are usually going to seek some validation you will also probably read some testimonials you will ask for recommendations because you are careful about where you are investing that resource right but when it comes to investing one hour of your time do we actually do the same are we uh, you know developing the same level of care and caution before investing one hour of our time it's perceived value, isn't it, at the end of the day? Like, you could have two pairs of trainers for $2 or 200 You put a branded swoosh or something on one of them, you all of a sudden, the value of that increases, and yet it's the exact same thing, right? So it's it's fascinating how how we attribute value and how much we're more willing to, to pay or invest in something based on that choice. Yeah, absolutely. Suram also says, I would never wait for that because I can manifest more on investing in myself. This is a wonderful perspective. Yuvarajan says, it depends. If it's worth the wait, I will wait for it as long as it rakes, right? Stephanie says, depending on where the gift certificate was from, right? Minakshi says, time is money, so I would not wait for money. That's a wonderful perspective. And Deepak says, I love doing not for getting gift. It is not so productive for for me uh, also very interesting and um maria said to make someone smile it would be worth getting out of that which is also very very interesting so if we now see uh what could be <laughs> lisa said self-investing is cool absolutely if we can now see what could be the impact right and how we could develop a different level of care about where we are investing our time let's now look at the next question and try to evaluate. How would your life be different if you were as careful about your time expense as you are careful about your money expense? So again, remember, before investing your money, let's say you want to buy a house, you probably are going to do some research, right? You will evaluate whether it's worth or not, whether you're getting the best deal, right? Or there are other choices. How would your life be different if the same approach, the same level of care was adopted while you're investing your time? Viraj, looks like you want to say something. <laughs> no, it, it, what that reminds me of is Amazon Prime. Like we would pay extra to receive the item the day, on the day or the next day, whereas you can still have the option of receiving something in two or three days time, but yet it's that urge to get something quickly, which we're very quick to sign up and, and and whatever that may be. So that, that was just the example that popped into my head. And it's very interesting how these days, one of the um, most um, successful applications or platforms are the ones that save us time or yeah. money, a better boss. The winning ones are the one that save us both, right? Time and money. And so it's very interesting that we have more and more resources 
to make our life easier in terms of spending time comparing to our parents and grandparents. However, we all complain that we don't have time for anything. And this is the dilemma. Why does it arise? Is it truly that we don't have time because more activities are there in our life comparing to other parents and grandparents or the trick is somewhere else? Andrew says, I would have a lot more time, a lot. I'm happy, Andrew, you were able to see that perspective because imagine if we were as careful, right? That would be um, absolutely a big transformational experience. Candy says, I really evaluate big purchases a lot. It takes me time and research before I purchase. Maxine says, my day would be much more productive. And Minakshi says, so again, is your joy attained from time or from money? So here it's a little bit more about um, changing the way, you know, we evaluate the investment of our time. And so when we start being careful about where are we investing and we try to invest only where the maximum return on investment is guaranteed on our time, we would be able to see more returns and probably more instant returns. Abdi Wahab says he would be as successful as Jay if he was evaluating his time expenses. <laughs> um, not to be that example there. <laughs> well, that says, by being more mindful of my time, I value the internal validation and personal satisfaction that results from my time investment. Um, Kruti says, I would have the ability to say no more easily without hesitation. You see, this is the crux here, the, the effect of this exercise, right? When you start thinking about your time as a hard-earned resource, everything comes into perspective. Even you would be able to do bold actions that normally maybe you are not doing just because, you know, you would start evaluating that investment differently. Leona says we would be more productive. Donna says, as you get older, your values and priorities change. I resonate with that, Donna. Time as in age can be a greatest gift in reflection. Absolutely. Miriam says, I would have already gotten my certification as a JSHERI certified coach. Miriam, I'm sure you are on the right track. Cherish says uh, she wouldn't waste time. Lucy says life would be different in more valuable ways that are priceless. Um, Evelina says, my day would be filled with more things I love doing and less of those I have to do. Yeah. And Jennifer says, I admit, I would save a lot of time. Preeti says, my day would be full of more quality stuff and less quantity. Tyler says, I would be closer aligned with my purpose and who I want to be. Right? So I think Tyler just came up with a very powerful answer for himself. Mm -hmm. Right? Because the thing is, who, who stops us from changing that perspective? Viraj, why do you think we don't, you know, we don't just adopt it? Why don't we care about our time as much? I think it's because we've never truly reflected on it. As, as we've grown up, we've been educated to believe that time is money and money, like we, we hear it, it's about stuff. We, we grow up because we have to attain certain things, but we're never really taught the value of time application and how sometimes you could spend five minutes on something which could yield you a much significant return later and it's again the book atomic habits really comes to my mind it's just those little things every single day incrementally are going to make a big difference i, I just thought of an example now where um when i was working in the corporate world i on my way home i'd always stop into the petrol station and grab a, a four pound coffee and when you do the maths that's 20 pounds a week every week which was like a grand a year just on coffee but then I thought well actually I could have just spent five minutes before I was leaving to fill up my coffee cup and I could have gone straight home rather than pulling into the petrol station queuing up spending 20-25 minutes just kind of stretching my legs and all of that stuff and I was like I've just wasted half an hour a day on a four pound coffee which has put me financially out of pocket and I could have gone home a little bit quicker as well so when you just start to do this comparison you're like yeah I could spend a, a little bit more here but actually what I'm going to get in return is so much more. Yeah. We've just never been taught to look at it in this way. Exactly. And while the financial literacy is raising more, that is why it is easier to bring the parallel in terms of investment, right? And think about your time investment the way we think about money. So 
let's say for example uh our monthly expense is five thousand dollars right and you want to make a purchase which is 25 percent of your monthly salary you will probably evaluate is it really necessary the the thing that i'm going to get out of it you know emotional physical mental is it worth the investment that i'm making so the same way if you start approaching the time investment things are going to shift so let's move forward and try to play the um roti game <laughs> roti game because we are going to be playing further and converting 24 hours in $2,400. Uh, again, remember, the price is just a label in order to shift the perspective. We are trying to reframe the way we talk and think about our time and start thinking about it as a resource, hard-earned resource, which currently is equivalent to money. Let's convert your 24 hours yesterday and start talking about them not as ours, but as US dollars. And so let's try to convert your 24 hours in 2400 US dollars. Let's try to analyze your time expense yesterday and let's try to see where did you invest $2,400 yesterday and what was the return on your investment? So once again, we convert your 24 hours you spent yesterday in $2,400, 100 USD for each hour. Then we will try to analyze your time expenditure yesterday and where did you invest those $2,400 and what was the return on your investment? Let's look at the example in order to play this game so an example could be yesterday i spent 800 dollars on sleeping i've got the following returns on my investment i've i i felt more healthy i felt more relaxed i felt more energy i spent 200 dollars on commuting but this is my cost of earning an income because without commuting i cannot get to the office I spent $800 on working in the office, but this is my source of income. And so I have some returns, which is income, maybe professional experience, connection with my coworkers. And also I spent $400 on scrolling through Instagram feed. And when I want to come up with the ROIs on this, I struggle to measure them. Or you can have your own example. So let's try to see how did you spend your 24 hours yesterday by trying to talk about them in terms of monetary investment. How did you spend your 2400 yesterday? And what was the most important, most importantly, the ROI from that investment? Which return on your investment did you see from that um, time expenditure? Viraj, maybe you can give us an example by giving it a start. Yeah, no, I'm just thinking I didn't get much sleep last night, so I'm already on the bad start. No, um, so if we look at that, um, okay, so Saturday I got up, I had about eight hours of sleep, so that was $800, which got me in a good mood, bit of energy, slightly overslept, not a good idea, but it was well worth it. Uh, and then we got in the car we did a hundred dollars an hour's worth of driving to visit family which was nice because we got to have some connection uh, with my wife's grandmother we spent some time with uh, my kids grandparents so that was well worth the investment there and then we got, did the food shopping for the week so that was me and my son that was about an hour there which has set us up for the week which is good we got some healthy things and we got a meal planning for the week now here's where it kind of fell apart a little bit in the afternoon for about four hours was just doing really nothing because yes part of it was just fun being with the kids part of it was on the feed but i feel that there was an opportunity there to do something because that was really those that, that isn't something that i can actually truly account for in terms of what happened it was just we're there in front of the tv we're reading a bit of books but i think there was some opportunity there so if i look at my numbers i'm on 10 hours 14 hours and then in the evening we went out for dinner so that was $200, well, it didn't cost that much, thankfully. Um, but it was nice. We just got out of the house for a little bit, went to a restaurant because we we're about to go into a, sort of a mini lockdown. So we thought, let's get something in now. So that was nice. My daughter really wanted to go to Harvester. Um, so that was nice. And then in the evening, I spent $200 watching Cobra Kai. Great show. Well worth the wind down. <laughs> 
So you felt the only part of your day which was not bringing you really the return on investment was that nothingness, right? Yeah. And if I look at that, I could have spent half an hour going for a walk, doing some exercise. The kids were chilling, watching TV. I could have got on the exercise bike. So I, I felt that that was loose time that wasn't accounted for. And I can't really say I, I got value from that time. Mm. Thank you for sharing those reflections, Viraj. I think you have promoted a lot of responses that we are already seeing. Candy, for example, spent $2,000 on relaxing, which helped her physically and mentally because two days prior were hectic, which means a great return on investment, isn't it, Candy? And she spent $200 on the internet communicating with friends and family and $200 cooking to keep her healthy. Looks like Candy really invested her time well yesterday. Sounds Let's like a good day. Let's look at Yuvarajan's uh, uh, Yuvarajan's uh, time expenditure. Eight hundred dollars was investing in sleeping, two hundred for learning and growth, five hundred for acts of service, five hundred for daily work in the office, three hundred for quality time and conversations, and hundred for meditation. Looks like Yuvarajan also has great level of awareness where the time is being spent. And by the time, by the way, do not forget. If the mass doesn't add up and you don't add up with 2400, it means there is unknown time spent, which yep. means that time went by, but you don't know where did you spend it. So uh, Deepak says, we, really nice idea. We will think about it before spending it, right? And um, Minakshi says, 600 sleep, 200 meditate breath, teach myself, calm, succeed, set plan and work, accomplish efficiently, 400 on teaching myself not to waste time to complain and gossip or not relevant issues, and 800 spent quality time looking, uh, cooking, reading, eating, hugging, loving all around. Absolutely love that. Donna, yesterday, thousand to others. <laughs> Roti will come back in a few months. <laughs> I love that talk. 50 on myself and will I think 500 right and will suffer if I don't balance 1000 on my children which is priceless absolutely agree and uh Jill this 800 to 900 at the beach well that is some quality investment isn't it <laughs> but I feel refreshed and full body workout I meditated and was life on genius 100 watched Mulan cartoon for the first time in my life I felt childish 100 to my roommate 300 to travel to the beach but listens to jay's book and interviews with others i love how jill this is very particular you see spends time traveling but it was actually an investment because she read a book i absolutely love it and viraj any of any of the great uh, answers that you are seeing no I, i'm curious to see how donna's roti comes back as a big fat nun so let's see see the size of that when it comes back um I like you, Rajan. It's very sort of banker talk as well. I love that. It was here, very segmented. I can imagine that spreadsheet looks good. Um, yeah, I, I think it. I, I think there's some great reflections and people just seeing. I think again, it's the value proposition of the time and and where people are and where it can go. Like Maria's one just here, celebrating my cousin's birthday, five hundred dollars. Connect with family, five hundred dollars on sleep. Not enough. Felt tired. So again, potentially quantifying how that could have impacted. 200 on spiritual growth, 200 on reading, help me grow, 100 on exercise, 100 cooking. So I think it's really great to just look at the gaps, as you say, like if you can't account for those 24 hours, you've got a hole in your pocket. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good, that's <laughs> a very good point. Now, I also love, uh, Jennifer says, this is a great exercise. I'm going to do it for the next seven days. So it will help me see the value of time and where I'm losing or wasting time. Uh, thank you, Jennifer. You actually voiced over, you know, the homework because in order to see, first of all, the awareness of your time expense, but also the ROI, right, of your time investment, it is recommended to do this exercise during your evening reflection or journaling at least for seven days, so it will become a habit. Subconsciously, you will start to develop more care, more awareness, and more attention when you are thinking about where and how you are investing your time. Also start to, uh, instead of saying spending, start to say investing. This is also going to create a slight mindset shift because spending means, you know, it's gone. But investing means I'm investing to get something back, right? And so it's going to bring uh, some more awareness. Andrew said, 
six hours of sleep, one hour exercising, one hour reading, one and a half JSH certification school program, bravo, and too much time watching football. <laughs> well, it depends what team you're watching. I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> and again, remember, if you're watching football, but it, um, you know, in return, you receive emotion happiness uh, it energizes you or it relaxes you you know or it helps you unwind that's a great return on investment the only worrying situation is when you are uh, watched football but subconsciously during all the time watching football you were not comfortable because you were repeating to yourself every five minutes oh my god i'm procrastinating i should be studying and i'm watching football oh my god i'll, I'll have to do it tomorrow and tomorrow it's gonna be a lot so you know this self-dialogue is actually distracting but if it makes you feel happy that's absolutely great return on investment uh, Miriam spent 100 meditating, uh, 1,100 near her dad at the hospital, sorry to hear that, and the rest were to relax and watch Jay's uh, video. Uh, Evelina says she lost $200 yesterday, <laughs> that is very interesting, and uh, one of the interesting uh, candidates says love this exercise, uh, I'm sure it was uh, you know, uh, helpful because um, again, just shifting the perspective, shifting the way you talk about your time, shifting the way you spend and invest your time is already going to uh, create a various, um, you know, various levels of uh, the way you're even thinking about your time. So as the uh, last exercise, I invite you to now think about the last step before we say goodbye. After you have seen the returns on investment, you should be very clearly able to see time stealers. Time stealers are activities that suck out your time without any positive return on time investment. One thing, time stealers are activities that suck out your time out of your day without any positive return on time investment. In other words, what is the activity that doesn't bring you not the positive emotions not you know it doesn't make you a better person or happier person it doesn't make your life more meaningful right but you still are spending time on it moreover some of the time stealers can bring you negative emotions let's look at an example uh teens addiction to social media the amount of time being spent on scrolling uh, is enormous. Yes, yeah? some people spent up to six hours. Yesterday I was watching the documentary. Up to six hours a day is spent on scrolling through the feed. What is the return on that time investment? Um, sabotaged self-image, um, ruined self-confidence for some, depression, anxiety. So this is the return on investment. Sometimes we are getting without realizing it by investing our precious time and remember we only got twenty-eight thousand plus you know days or some of us who are luckier maybe thirty-five thousand plus but on average that's what the facts are saying right um Viraj, any of the time stealers you want to share with us since you um, it? yeah no i mean social media i think the news especially if it's the same news over and over again stretched out for a week um i've i've, I've just turned it off because i felt i was I spent, we do the maths, half an hour a day watching news that was pretty much the same as the day before. So in that sense, that's what $350, whatever that was, a week. And I was like, well, that it, it's just not serving me. So I stopped watching the news. Um, again, social media, I think, is the big one. It's just very easy to get on the feed and, and have all these things. And actually, even if you look at social media, how we're looking at time as a resource, how is your social media a resource? Are you consuming or are you investing? Yeah. start looking at it in that sense and very quickly you'll see that i spent an hour on facebook and i've got nothing out of it except imposter syndrome or comparison or uh, you know rather than using that as the tool um i think commutes are an interesting one because uh, you know sometimes you just have to go from a to b but then how do you make that commute more meaningful of you know are you listening to something or if you're on the school run are you just kind of there and just kind of autopiloting your kids to school or are you just having a sing-along and having a laugh with your kids like it's just these little things to begin to question of is the time being spent redundantly or is it in, or is it more meaningful is the word and just weighing it up absolutely agree. and one of the comments from karen that also uh, made me remember one of the points i forgot to make earlier is one of the ways that you can literally change the way you know you are investing your time throughout the day 
is to analyze how do you start the day. So one of the things that is most underestimated and really not uh, many um, you know, speakers and scientists talk about that is your decision-making capacity. So just a little bit of a uh, step out of the content. Probably everybody knows the story of um, you know, Steve Jobs and Mark Zuckerberg, who are wearing the same, um, you know, uh, jeans and the same T-shirt to work. So a lot of legends and myths are already about that, right? But one of the things that they have been explaining earlier, and uh, not much attention was paid to that, is that the reason they are wearing the same uh, colors, right, and the same jeans and the same T-shirts, so they save their decision-making capacity to create more meaningful life and more impact for the world, right? So every time when you need to make decision, which uh, color of jeans to wear, which pair of shoes to wear, which hairdo uh, must you, you know, do today, you are taking off from that decision-making capacity. Saving as much as possible, nourishing that decision-making capacity will leave you with more energy to do more meaningful activities that can bring you higher roti right return on time investment yeah the the process is called sat satisfying if i remember correctly and it's just you just streamline your menial decisions so that you've got more capacity for the important decisions so you're not spending time worrying about certain things you actually have the energy and the focus to just tackle things instead yeah absolutely Let's look at some time stealers from our audience today. Yuvarajan says his time stealer is daydreaming, thinking of what ifs and maybes. So Yuvarajan, I think now you know what is the barrier, right? And you probably know how to tackle that. Um, Andrew says his time stealer is watching the news. Andrew, does it bring you any positive ROIs? Does it bring you any emotions? Does it bring more uh, meaning to your life? If the answer is no, you probably know what to do. Lucy says, time stealer equals cell phone notifications. I think for many, many, many of us, unfortunately, Lucy, you are absolutely right. Preeti says, worry steals time. Of course, because you spend time thinking, worrying and overthinking. Miriam also agrees to that. Marwa says, time stealer is listening to friends complaining. That's a very good point, Marwa. Not only it steals your time, but again, if it doesn't bring you personally a uh, great return on time investment, it also actually has that tendency to spread the um, negative thinking pattern projected on you without you being aware about it. There were multiple studies done on complaining and complaining can become not only toxic, but it can also affect you. And subconsciously, you will start repeating the same patterns because we all know it takes up on average 40 days to start speaking like our friend, right? And start to repeat some thinking patterns. Viraj, do you agree with that? Yeah, no, I agree. I, I think just, again, this is great because you're just noticing all these different things. And and again, it's it's a choice as well. So if it's now, it may have been an unconscious choice, but now you're consciously aware of it. Now you, there's something you can do. And I see, I see worrying come up a lot. And I think a lot of us do that. There's a great image online which says, here's your problem. Can you do something about it? Yes. Then why worry? Or can you do something about it? No. Then why worry? So it's almost like the fantasy of worry rather than, okay, can I do something about it? Great. Go do it. Can I not? Then I can't do anything about it. So why worry? I love that. Donna says, hair and makeup are your time stealers. But here is the thing, Donna, for us women especially, hair and makeup can be a great time investment as it brings you a lot of positive emotions. I also read some studies that when women put makeup and do their hair, they subconsciously just a little bit, uh, you know, even more confident in their day versus when they don't do that. So maybe you are investing that time into bringing more positive emotions. Viraj, what's your take on that? Yeah, I mean, one of the things I liked about lockdown was not having to do my hair. But at the same time, you're right. It's If you're creating it as a chore, then it's obviously going to be a drain. But then again, it's intentionality and purpose. Like, what is the purpose in doing it? And if it's something that's going to enhance you, enhance your confidence, enhance your... Um, presence then why would it be something that is a, can be seen in the negative light potentially absolutely Ruchi said social media like instagram and here is an important thing to note about the social media so um 
You can spend time on social media, as Viraj said, mindlessly scrolling and consuming content, which does not bring you any return on investment. Or you can use social media for education, right? You can use social media for growth. You can use social media for learning. We all know uh, some influencers, including Jay, who can help you, you know, get there. And their content is on social media. Perhaps you want to evaluate what you are doing on social media does it bring you the positive roti or uh, does it bring you more of you know time stealing and uh, absence of positive ROIs? Amir says kind of the same. I think maybe spending time with social media. I always feel bad when I get my weekly report on phone usage. Yeah, I think a lot can resonate with that. Maxine says uh, playing silly games on apps. Again, Maxine, uh, if playing games uh, makes you feel happy, right, brings you positive emotion, maybe dozing it out, you know, but uh, still having that emotions is great idea what you want to really evaluate is what is the reward right that i'm getting what is the um return on this time expenditure that i'm getting while i'm playing those apps, uh, uh games sorry and uh another interesting uh time stealer from radika my time stealer is spending more than 30 minutes of my family whatsapp group what do you take on this Vera? I, I left a gazillion WhatsApp groups a few months ago because it was just like the same forwards, the same messages going around in big family groups and cousin subgroups and then you got siblings and all that stuff. It's like, again, you just question if it's really that important, we'll get on the phone and we'll speak rather than just kind of feeling like you have to keep up your digital appearance. Absolutely, absolutely uh, agree with you. And, uh, you know, not only WhatsApp groups, but also uh, Facebook groups, right? And uh, some of the other groups that can be really engaging. And again, it's all about what are we getting out of it. So uh, Maxine says, I have a new puppy. He's a time stealer. That is absolutely fantastic. Maxine, I'm sure he brings very positive ROIs from that time that you invest uh, with. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, I think I'm going to read the last comment from Lisa as we are well over our time allocation and that's our time investment. Lisa says, do not forget what makes you smile and enjoy life. I think that with this last amazing comment, we are going to say thank you for doing this amazing exercises together. Thank you for learning from each other. And Viraj, of course, thank you for doing this with us. No, I, I, I love it. It's, it's always great to connect with everyone and, and just share space and share energy. So thank you so much to everyone here for, for your time and choosing to be here and see you in a couple of weeks. Absolutely. See you in a couple of weeks as we are going to be bringing another coaching clinic and who knows maybe the topic that you are going to suggest is going to be chosen so just let us know in the comments what do you want us to cover next we are looking forward to meeting you in just two weeks and please drop some uh, reflections for our page how has the exercise been for you do not stop just today try to repeat this exercise at least for seven days and if you want to drop your results and reflections on the page who knows, maybe your results are going to inspire others to start thinking about their time with more care and investing it only in those activities that bring us positive ROI. Have a wonderful rest of the day, everyone. See you in two weeks. Goodbye. Bye, guys. See you next time.